There's been a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome to the Fifth Seal, number 37. I am your host, the Evangelical Norm. The Fifth Seal is a podcast going through the World Watch list, counting down from 50 to number 1. That is why you'll notice that our numbers are going backwards. Two weeks ago we did number 38, we are on number 37. We are counting down to number 1 of the worst uh, countries for Christians uh, in regards to persecution around the world every other week we go through for right now up until the month of uh november we will go through um counting down different countries we do it every the second and fourth wednesdays of every month we hit a new country look at some uh stories about persecution around the world and then do some prayer points for those specific countries as we come up to them on the world watch list uh, leading up to the month of November. In the month of November, we will count down from 30 to number one, November being Persecuted Church Awareness Month, uh, which I decided <laughs> was Persecuted Church Awareness Month. I didn't know who to go to, to to find out who makes those things official, so it just seemed like a good time to do it, and so November it is. We count down number 30 to number one every day we will have a story about um persecution and so on so if you know anybody who might be interested in in joining us just willing to to be aware of what's happening to our brothers and sisters around the world to pray for those brothers and sisters with us um, invite them to join the fifth seal facebook page uh, invite them to join and subscribe to the youtube channel and so on so we can uh, just continue to bring brothers and sisters together to lift up our our brothers and sisters around the world who are being persecuted for their faith in jesus christ so with that let's get to our first story um this from international christian concern only 40 christians return to mosul you'll remember that june of 2012 is when isis uh, went through the city of mosul marking the homes of the christians with the infamous uh, arabic letter n for nazarene uh, indicating where the christians live so when isis came through this was done by their their neighbors so when isis came through the city they were either forced to convert to islam uh, killed um, or driven out of the city June of 2012 was the first time in 2,000 years there were zero Christians in the city of Mosul. And since then, since ISIS has been pushed back, they still have a a large uh, presence in the city and only 40 Christians have returned. So the story from International Christian Concern. Mosul's only priest, Father Emmanuel Adel Clou, has reported that only 40 of the 15,000 Iraqi Christians who used to live in the city have returned home. Mosul was captured by the Islamic State and used as their base of operations throughout Iraq. Although defeated, ISIS maintains a strong presence in Mosul. Although barely any Christians have returned home to Mosul, many still have an active presence there. Father Clue estimates that hundreds of Christians are employed in Mosul, and about a thousand Christians are students at Mosul University. However, all of these individuals are commuters. The lack of security and broken community trust are the primary reasons why Christians are so reluctant to return to their homes in Mosul. Many still believe that their former neighbors maintain the ideology of ISIS, recalling how easily it was for the militants to capture the city. West Mosul remains an extremely challenging neighborhood because of how ISIS, ISIS maintains activities there. Many Christians were, would prefer not to have interactions in Mosul, but are forced to commute there out of necessity and lack of other alternatives. So again, our, our brothers and sisters who were driven out of their homes by their, their Islamic neighbors uh, 
are not wanting to come back. So even though we, we did see in the last couple of years, I want to say 2017 was the first year there were, no, 2018 was the first year there were uh, Easter services held in Mosul. Oh, very few of them are coming back. They're still afraid to to live in the city because of the broken trust with, with their Muslim neighbors who marked their homes uh, indicating who were the Christians so ISIS knew who to uh, drive out of the city and who to kill uh, when they came in. So continue to pray for our brothers and sisters who are uh, reluctantly still uh, going to school um, and interacting in the city um, in under fear of what could happen to them as, as Christians if ISIS were to ever come back and return. So bringing us to our world watch list, uh, we are looking at Tunisia this time uh, this week. So a few facts about uh, Tunisia, the region it is in is in Africa. The persecution type is Islamic oppression. The persecution level is very high. Population there is 11,659,000, of which about 23,000 um, are Christians. So less than 1%, um, a little more than actually about 2% um, of the population are Christians. Uh, the main religion is Islam. Uh, government, parliamentary, parliamentary republic, and the leader is President Beji Kaid Asibi. Asibsi. Asibsi. Yeah. Say that three times real fast. Hostility and pressure in Islamic society. For Christians in Tunisia, life within Islamic society comes with hostility and daily pressure and the threat of Islamic militant activity, especially by those returning from fighting with ISIS and still worrying. At the political level, Islamist political parties are still influential. Islamic militants spread fear throughout the country, many having links to organized crime. Foreigners in Tunisia enjoy m more freedom of religion, but are restricted from engaging in openly evangelistic activities. The small community of Tunisian converts experiences persecution from family members, relatives, and the community at large, and face difficulties with the state authorities that don't officially recognize their conversion to Christianity. A journalist who investigated the situation in Tunisian Christians in depth states, quote, Tunisian Christians face discrimination and targeting that is often obscure and hidden to the public eye. It affects their day to day lives because of the, their Christian identities. Many believers experience various forms of Christian persecution, such as job insecurity, abandonment from family, friends, and even find it and even fiancés. They are victims of verbal, mental and physical abuse, unquote. Due to the above factor, most Tunisian converts to Christianity choose to hide their faith and cannot openly worship and live their lives as Christians. The hostility and pressures they face from society at large make it dangerous to share their faith with their family members, relatives, neighbors, friends, or colleagues. They also find it difficult to gather for worship and fellowship due to the risks any possible exposure would entail. Couple examples: Church facilities and buildings are monitored ostensibly for security reasons and also for purposes of surveillance. In April 2018, the UN Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion or Belief reported on Tunisia. He concluded that quote old laws and societal pressures pose the greatest challenges to religious freedom in Tunisia. A number of old laws, such as public morality concepts and public order provisions, are used to enforce restrictions on, for example, food consumption during Ramadan." Unquote. During the World Watch List 2000, 2019 reporting period, foreign Christians have been detained for inter and interrogated for possessing Christian literature, and they were also accused of proselytization. Prayer points for Tunisia. Pray for the persecuted Christian youth, especially those who face pressure from non-believing family members when they want to marry. Pray that the government of Tunisia would place, would put in place effective legal measures to prevent, investigate, and finally bring justice for violations of freedom of religion, particularly involving those Muslim background, those of Muslim background who converted to Christianity. Pray persecuted believers will feel God's presence. Many lose hope and don't know how to move forward with their lives. Pray the Lord will hinder the plans of Islamic extremists and draw them to Jesus. Let's pray. 
Father, thank you again so much for this this medium we have to, to come together from all over the world to, uh, to be aware and to lift up our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith in you. We praise you for, uh, for the internet and things like YouTube and Facebook where we can, where we can come together, um, although we're spread apart, that we can still come together at one time in one place, uh, uh, to pray for and support our brothers and sisters around the world, we we praise you, God, that you have uh, that you have put it on our hearts to um, to lift up our brothers and sisters. God, we lift up uh, those who are in in Mosul right now. Those who are have taken it upon themselves to move back into the city, although reluctantly. Uh, God, we pray for their protection. We pray that that you would continue to. Uh, push ISIS out of that city, that you would let it return to um, the the once uh, bright home for the Christians that were there, um, and that they would be willing to come back into their, their city and their homes and, and return to their churches and their jobs and their neighborhoods um, and glorify you in that, Lord. We pray that you would, um, that you would continually be at work there. Um, bringing the gospel to those who need to hear it, Lord. We pray for, for those members of ISIS and the, the Muslim neighbors of these Christians, that they would hear the gospel, that they would be convicted of their sin, that they would turn from from the deception that is Islam, and that they would embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that they would be saved, Lord. Father, we lift up our brothers and sisters in Tunisia. God, we pray that um, that those who are, are young, those Christian youth, uh, especially those who are, are seeking to marry God, that we, we pray that you would protect them, that you would um, just reduce the, the pressure that they face from non-believing family members and community members, Lord, that we, you would um, give them boldness to, to live their faith and to um, marry uh, in their faith and, and continue to, to worship and, and serve you. Lord, we pray that the government would uh, would make legal measures to prevent um, the injustices that are happening against Christians there. Um, we pray that they would put in laws and protections for freedom of religion. Um, God, we pray specifically for for those who have converted from Islam to Christianity, that you would protect them in their workplace, that you would protect their jobs, that you would protect their livelihoods, um, that you would ultimately protect their lives from those around them who would take that. Father, we lift up um, all the persecuted. We pray for all the believers there that are persecuted, um, those who, who um, are so persecuted that they feel like they could lose hope, Lord. We pray that you continue to, to strengthen their faith, that you would continue to give them boldness and to know that, that you have saved them, God, and that that there's no other place to turn but you for truth. Um, and we pray that you would hinder the plans of Islamic extremists who would uh, plot and plan um, uh, harm for those Christians living in Tunisia. Lord, and ultimately, again, we just pray that that in all of these things, and in, in our brothers and sisters, as they live out their faith in you, that you would be glorified in that, that they would be willing to, to give you the glory as they stand firm in their faith in the, in the midst of persecution, and that they would proclaim and they would refuse to renounce their faith in you, and that they would continue to, to share the gospel and preach the good news of, of salvation in Jesus Christ, and that others would be drawn to you and would be saved. And ultimately, again, Again, it is for your glory, Lord, that we pray all these things, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Again, thanks, everybody. Thank you for, for being part of this group, for being willing to just take some time out of your day um, a couple of times a month and throughout the month of November to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted simply because of their faith and their belief in Jesus Christ. So continue to, to lift them up. Continue to invite people to be part of this Facebook page, The Fifth Seal. Um, listen, you can, it's available. The um, 
podcast is available in audio form on Google Play and iTunes, Spotify. Uh, you can go to the YouTube page, subscribe, and see the other stuff that, that uh, I do on the Evangelical Norm uh, YouTube page. But again, just keep lifting up our brothers and sisters in Christ. Keep praying for them that they would be willing to glorify God. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They are necessary. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria. Mm-hmm.